Thank you for joining us at Table Talk with Paula and Libby. With our host, Paula Arnold. Our co-host, Libby Patton. Today's special guest is Sheila Gherkin. Join us as we discuss inductive Bible study. Well, welcome back to Table Talk this week. Libby is not here. Uh, we miss her, but she'll be back next week. But today we have a wonderful guest, and I've just got to meet her lately, and her name is Sheila Gherkin. How right. are you, Miss Sheila? I'm fine, thank I'm you. I'm so happy you're here. <laughs> thank you. So Dr. Baker had a great idea, didn't he? He did. He was like, why don't you have <laughs> Sheila on? Uh, but anyway, Dr. Baker's going to be uh, watching, so Dr. Baker just thinks that Sheila's just a bag of chips and a drink and everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sheila, let's go on and prove that, okay? Okay. So, tell us today what we're going to talk about. Well, I'd like to talk about inductive Bible study, mm -hmm. how important it is and how we All can... Right, let's wait one second. What is inductive Bible study? Well, one good way to remember what inductive Bible study is, is you want to pronounce it in the Bible. In the Bible. I like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's simply where you go directly to the scriptures and study the scriptures for themselves before going to outside commentaries. Really? Okay. Yeah. You now, want the Holy Spirit to speak to you mm -hmm. personally through God's Word. Well, great. Let's find out a little bit of information about you first. So, uh, Sheila, what do you do? I work for state government. Mm -hmm. I am a uh, program advisor for the Workers' Compensation Fund. Well, wonderful. And where do you go to church at? Buckram Baptist Church here oh, in Frankfurt. Great. Okay. And so what made you get in this Bible study? Actually, I've been in um, inductive Bible study through Precept Ministries for many years. I was first introduced to it in college in Memphis, Tennessee. So inductive just means going into the Bible and ha doing a study for yourself right. to find out. Right. Or you could say independent Bible study, mm -hmm. but of course we're always dependent upon the Holy Spirit to teach us. Right. But right. Okay, so who puts on this Bible study? Well, I first got into inductive Bible study through a ministry called Precept Ministries International, mm -hmm. and they produce the Bible studies called Precept Upon Precept. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of that ministry is to teach you basic Bible study skills while studying a book or a topic of the Bible. Yeah, because I'm going to say sometimes, you know, it's hard. I know, uh, I remember the first time I read the Bible, mm -hmm. and I read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And I went to a friend, and I was like, did you know that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is, is the same story? <laughs> and she was like, yes, it's just told by different people. So, see, I think we need, uh, even myself today can use something to study the Bible because it's right. kind of hard sometimes to get in the Bible and, and understand everything. So does this program help you? Absolutely. It takes you through the basic principles and steps of learning to study the Bible for yourself. All right, well, tell us a little bit about your book you got. Well, uh, the main uh, Bible study for Precept Ministries is Precept Upon Precept. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, they generally tell you it takes five hours of homework a week. Well, some people are a little bit intimidated by that. And yeah. Maybe they're new, and, you know, that's a little bit too much for them. They have other types of Bible studies. One is called In and Out, and it's to get you into the Scripture and help you to live it out. And that only requires about two hours of homework a week. Mm -hmm. And then they have other different types of studies. The ministry has been around, um, I think, since the early 70s. So it's been around for a little while. And of course, they've improved and learned a lot over the years. And one type of study that they uh, have, can I just show them yes, this? Yes, go right ahead. Okay, these are called the 40-minute Bible studies. And they don't require any homework. You mm -hmm. actually do the study right there in a group setting in class if you want. Oh, so any church <clears throat> could take on this program. Absolutely, you could do it. Like in a Sunday school or a Wednesday night setting. Right, right. Or you could have an independent Bible study in your home. You know, if you've been looking, wanting to have a Bible study in your home and you just didn't know how to go about it, uh, this would be a good thing right. to do. And Sheila, is it fair to say that if someone wanted to get into this, they could call you and ask you about it? Absolutely. Well, they ahead. could call me or they could call the ministry or I can give you their website. Okay, we'll just have all that on the screen. Okay. And uh, one great thing about the 40-minute studies, this one is turning your heart toward God. But they have them on all kinds of topics like prayer, forgiveness, fasting, mm. marriage, discipleship, several Everything. different topics like that. Well, great. May I look at your book and Absolutely. just see? So this is a six-week um, right. 
Um, and I believe all the 40-minute studies, they're called, also called the no homework studies, mm -hmm. I think all of those are six weeks. And, you know, it'd be great for uh, a woman. So this is kind of like that book that I bought from you it about is. Daniel. Right. And it's really good. You know, you can go in with Daniel, and if you've never studied Daniel in depth, it can really get into depth, and there's images and pictures, mm -hmm. and then this book will go into detail of what every uh, image and right. uh, meant and uh, that. Some people think that studying the Bible is very intimidating, but when you learn the basic steps of Bible study, it's really not intimidating. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of practicing it. Can you give us some of those basic sure. steps? Sure, sure. Uh, there are three basic principles to uh, Bible study, and that is observation, interpretation, and application. And observation is your foundation. You know, if your uh, observation is faulty, then probably your interpretation and application mm -hmm. is going to be faulty. So you want to do accurate interp I mean, accurate observation. So you want to have a good foundation. Right. You want to have a good foundation of what the Bible is about. Like the New Testament, we would it would it, we would say that it's about <clears throat> Jesus Christ dying for you and raising from the dead and then going into the Pentecost and going into right. the teachings that tell us how to live and act and how to be Christians. Right. So that would say that would be a good foundation. Right. And uh, the foundation of observation is asking the five W's and H. Who, what, where, when, why, how. Well, and you good. want to just go directly to the scripture mm -hmm. and just I study gotta write it. that down. That's good. Who, huh? what, what? Where, why, where. Yeah, why or where, mm -hmm. and when, and how. And the beauty of it is, is that as you go to the scripture, you know, God promises that the Holy Spirit is our resident teacher. So are you saying then when, you know, I'm just, I, I'm just being like a lot of other people out there. So when you're saying that, so when we're, <clears throat> we're doing a whole verse or a chapter or what, when we ask these questions, who, what, where, when, right. and how, right. and would that be a whole chapter? Sure. So let's just say we took the um, book of um, Peter. Okay. So who would that be about? Right. Well, you would write who wrote it. Okay. To so whom be... was it written? Okay. Who so... is he talking about? Okay. That's good. When was it written? Mm -hmm. Why was it written? Uh, what was the cultural context at the time? Mm -hmm. We know from the scriptures and also from historical documents that when Peter wrote both of his epistles, there was a great deal of persecution going on in the church. And you want to know that. Right. You want to know because it starts to help you make sense out of some of the things that he says. You right. know, why he said what he said. Right. And that's good. Sometimes you wonder why. And sometimes we wonder who is he uh, speaking to exactly. And, I mean, what was going on during that time that um, may not be going on during this time, but it still applies to us. Yeah, and why the author may have included one scenario from the life of Christ and maybe didn't include another scenario from the life of Christ, well, it probably goes back to the purpose of his book and who the audience is. Well, yeah, it would be like if this, if me and you <clears throat> went, and uh, I'm gonna use Dr. Baker as an <laughs> example. If me, and Dr. Baker is a really dear friend that uh, Sheila's known for a long time and I've just got blessed to get to know. So if me and you spent a week with Dr. Baker mm -hmm. and then we came home and we wrote just a short story about him. Right. Your story is going to be totally different than my story. Even though we spent the same amount of time with him, we was there mm -hmm. together, you're, you're going to pick up on things that, that catches your eye or is more important to you. Right. I'm going to pick up on things. And so that's kind of why we have to know what's going right. on and why each person seen Jesus in a different uh, way. Is right. that fair to say? Right. Yes. Okay, that's yeah. good. Right. I'm learning yeah. right here today. <laughs> um, so that's the, the foundation of uh, Bible study is observation. And that's where we're going to ask the five W's and an H, the who, what, where, when, why, and how. Mm -hmm. um, and then you want to move into interpretation. Mm -hmm. And one thing that you want to use, or two main things, would be cross-references mm -hmm. and word studies. Um, like, uh, for example, uh, the word love, we have the one word love, but Greek has four different words. Right. What is those? Right. The four different words for love in the Greek, um, it's uh, agape, mm -hmm. phileo, mm -hmm. eros, 
and Storge, I believe, are the four. Well, you know, you could have just made up anything <laughs> you wanted because I would not have known the difference. But that's good. Yeah. So why do you think, <clears throat> so tell us, you're just so, Sheila is so knowledgeable. Um, you know, you could almost be intimidated me sitting here with her, but I'm not because she's so loving and kind, and I feel so comfortable with her. I can just <laughs> ask anything I want. So uh, the, the Bible was written in... What, Hebrew? It was written primarily in Hebrew and, and Greek with a little bit of Aramaic. Yeah, right. So then if we take the word love, so let's just say we're, we're doing an interpretation study of the word love. So we're going to cross-reference that in what? A Strong's Concordance? How are we going to cross-reference that? Uh, well, yes, a Strong's Concordance is an excellent tool. Mm -hmm. Most people nowadays are going to get a Bible study software. Okay, but Bible study. There's so much. That's to, good, yeah. Bible study software. Right. Okay. But whatever software you get, it's probably going to include a concordance, which is what the Strong's is, mm -hmm. and probably a basic uh, word dictionary in the Hebrew and the Greek, mm -hmm. and then probably a Bible dictionary that's mm -hmm. just going to give you more background information. Right. That's right. really but good. But there are excellent uh, software programs mm -hmm. out there. Any of your Christian bookstores would have those. Right. And you just download that on your computer, mm -hmm. and you just get on with it. And, and go I, I do know of one, I think that is free, and it's called eSword. Dot net. A sword. That'll be across the screen. Yeah. So will that get your word study there too? I think so. I have not used it, but I've heard other people that have used it, and I think it's got all of your basic Bible study tools on it. Another good one is blueletterbible.org. Mm -hmm. I okay. use that one a lot just to look up words and, and things like that. Right. So then interpretation, then, <laughs> we have a cross-reference. We're going to take do a cross-reference, and tell us what that means exactly. Well, like, for example, you'll find many uh, Old Testament quotes mm -hmm. in the New Testament, and right. you'll probably want to go back and look at that. But, you know, the Bible, it's just a, it's such an amazing book. It was written over a period, I think, of almost 2,000 years by, like, yes. 40 different people, mm -hmm. and yet there are no contradictions in it. Right. It is one beautiful, unified book. And it's the story of redemption. But yet people do say that it contradicts itself. Right. And that's why out learning how to study the Bible for yourself is so important. That is. So well, we're going to have to take a break. But when we come <laughs> back, we will continue. Okay. I'm Dan Luttrell, pastor at the Antioch Church. This Monday, August the 1st, we're going to be at Camp Pleasant Baptist Church, 830 Shadrick Ferry Road, out by Oynton Way. Start at 7 and... We'll end a little bit after 8 o'clock. Come out, and we're inviting all of Frankfurt to be with us to pray and see the power of God move. If you have any questions, call me at 229-2724. Well, welcome back. I am really learning a lot today. Uh, Sheila is here, and we're going to continue talking. So, Sheila, you feel as much you studied that the Bible is a unified Absolutely. Book. It is the story of God's love for us. For, really, from the Old Testament mm -hmm. in the beginning all the way to Revelations, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. and it? And it's the story of redemption, yes. of God's plan of redemption. Mm -hmm. And what is redemption exactly to you? It's like to buy somebody out of the slave market, mm -hmm. you know, That's good. To, to buy back. Mm -hmm. He's not only our creator, but he's also our redeemer. That's so wonderful. Okay, so let's move on then to uh, we've studied the observation and the interpretation. Now let's do the application. What does that mean exactly? Well, we see a really good uh, plan for application in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. And there it says that all scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, reproof, correction, and training in righteousness. And so that kind of gives us the questions that we want to ask for application. Does this passage, uh, what, what does this passage teach me? You know, what I, you want to ask yourself, what is this passage teaching me about God? As you've seen in studying Daniel. I'm going to read it if you don't care. It's okay. really good. I got the Amplified. It says, okay. all scripture is God-breathed, given by divine inspiration. So if you're out there today and you're going to say, well, just a bunch of men wrote this. And, we, you know, we just had a discussion, me and Lynn did with this. but uh, And we believe that it is uh, by divine uh, inspiration. Inspiration, yes. So it says, all scripture is God-breathed, given by divine inspiration, and is profitable for instruction, for conviction of sin, for correction of error, 
for restoration to obedience, for training in righteousness, learning to live in conformity to God's will, both publicly and privately, behaving honorably with personal integrity and moral courage. And 17 says, so that the man of God may be complete, proficient, outfitted, and thoroughly equipped for every good work. I love that. Right. I love that. So right. uh, go back now. You were saying that application. What is it in there, the questions we should ask? Well, we should always ask yourself, what is this passage teaching me about God? You've seen, for example, in the book of Daniel, some people could be very intimidated by the book of Daniel with all of those Let's strange dreams. Let's go back dreams. one second because this is so important. I want everybody out there to know, if you just thought that men have wrote this book and you just put it together, I, then I want you to know for sure that it says all scripture is God breathed. And God breathed it out. Mm -hmm. And so it is inspired. It was written by men, but it is inspired by the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Absolutely. Okay, so go on then. So we, when we're studying the Bible, we need to ask, what is it that God's teaching me? Right. What do I learn about God from this passage? Uh, as we've studied Daniel in the Friday night Bible study, you, we've just seen so many wonderful truths about God, that he's sovereign, that he rules over all, that he... Uh, sets up kings and tear, you know, takes down kings, mm -hmm. and we've seen so much about his kingdom. Right. You want to ask, what does this passage teach me about God? Mm -hmm. What does it teach me about myself? What does it teach me about life? And then you want to ask, how does it reprove me? How does it show me that I am off in my thinking or my uh, behaving? You yeah. know, and then it not only shows me where I'm wrong, it shows me how to correct it. Yeah, that's You know, the, good. the bottom line of so many issues in our lives is that we simply need to believe God. We need to take yeah. him at his work and believe what he says. And that's not always easy to do. No. But as we get into the scriptures and we see his faithfulness, we're going to be more likely to put our trust in him. Yes, so, we are. And I've always said, I was talking to a man one time about, about God, and he was just like, you know, Paula, I just can't, I just can't believe it. And I said, well, you know what? Just have the faith. And he was like, mm -hmm. I, the faith in what? I said, just have the faith that God is real, that God is true. Just have the faith that he is there. Because mm -hmm. so many people have a hard time believing. Mm -hmm. um, but if they would, and I have so many people, you know, um, people used to say, well, it's in the Bible this, or it's in the Bible that. So anyway, anyway Sheila, one time I was talking to this man, and he just couldn't believe, he couldn't have faith. And I said, well, just just do the, just have faith that there is a God and get to know him. Mm -hmm. Take time to get to know him because if you don't ever personally take time to get to know God mm -hmm. and all you ever do is, and I'm, there's, you know, I'm believing in you should go to church, you should listen to preachers, you should read books, but you're going to have to sometime get down with your own personal time with God and mm -hmm. let him teach you who he is. And a wonderful way to do that is to simply get in the scriptures right. and Romans tells us. That faith comes by hearing, hearing. and hearing, hearing by, by the, the word, word of God. God. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you want to build your faith, a great way to do that is to get into Bible study. Yes, it is. I love this Bible study. So is there anything else now you can tell us about application? Uh, and, of course, we saw that the last part of that is for training in righteousness. And it, it's just going to give us the answers for life, you know, just day by day, how many times do we encounter situations just big and small, that can just really throw us for a loop. Yes. If we don't have our roots going down deep mm -hmm. into what we believe and into right. who God is. Mm -hmm. But I've noticed more and more in my own life as I've studied the Word and I've learned the truth, that those truths have held me in hard times and in good yes. times. It That's is, yeah. what's my stability. And you know what? Sometimes with me, uh, just here lately, you know, when you go through some things, you know, you might get a little... A week, mm -hmm. and sometimes I just go around saying, "Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I know that Jesus loves me. He died on the cross for me personally. He rose again for me. He did everything just for me." Because so many people go around feeling unworthy, right? Or they don't feel that Jesus did anything for them. So you have to make it personal. And I mean, that's not being selfish or anything when I just walk around my house saying sometimes Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me because we're living in a world 
that I believe it's coming to an end. Yes, and we're living in a world that I think is more and more confusing. Yes. There are just no absolutes anymore. Everything is gray and murky. But God intends for us to walk in clarity. He intends for us to walk with hope. Yes, He does. And joy. Yes, and He does. And He intends for us to walk in the Word of God. And He intends for us, you know, it, if we... If we have a chance to witness to someone that's doing something not right, because if you go back to that scripture, you know, God tells you how to live. He tells you how to behave. You know, I don't need to get up here and really, if you're reading your Bible and you're studying your Bible, there should be no gray area. You know how to live. You know what to do. Mm -hmm. And, and right. if you go by this book, at church on Sunday, the, where I went to church, that's what the pastor was preaching. Well, I got my Bible on my phone. So if you know what's in the Bible, right. then you know to live it. Right, right. And if you're not living it, and you can't get confused. There's nowhere, I don't believe that the Bible is confusing. Confu I don't believe that right. it contradicts itself. Because God's itself. not the author of confusion. No, the devil is. Right. And I think that when you are in confusion, that you're being led by the devil. I'm not going to say you're the devil's got you or whatever. <laughs> I'm just saying that you're just being led by the wrong source. And a good thing, too, about Bible study is that so often we do it in a group, and you have that community. Right. And that's so important, mm -hmm. too, right. for our walk with the Lord. Yes, it is. Is that it He is. wants us to have that community with one yes. another. and He wants us to, um, to love one another and to communicate one another. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I said earlier, you are so smart. You're so <laughs> intelligent. I mean, I just feel like you're way up here, and you don't even know it, but I'm way down here. <laughs> but you just make me feel so at ease to just Thank ask you. you simple questions and you know I want to say that we all have different gifting and callings and even though Sheila is an attorney she should be a teacher too <laughs> because she's just because you're just studied so much haven't you and yes and, and I do love to study and I'm just currently wrapping up a study in Esther oh wonderful wonderful study and um, we're just finishing that up we did it on Wednesday night mm -hmm. did you learn anything new each time oh, yeah. you study, do you learn something new? Oh, yeah. yeah. See, that's what I think people don't understand. They think, oh, I've got to read my Bible. Yeah. Oh, I gotta, but you know what? Each time you read it, you find something new. Oh, yeah. And um, I'm currently doing, uh, I'm not teaching it, but I'm just participating in a precept class in Shelbyville on mm -hmm. Tuesday nights at 630. And we're doing Revelation. Oh, and that can be a really overwhelming that book. That can be, but <laughs> I bet really that's can. exciting. But it is. It's very exciting, and mm -hmm. it's just so wonderful to mm -hmm. see how God's promises are going to come to an ultimate fulfillment. Yeah, and that, anybody is welcome to that study. Well, that's wonderful. And you know what? I've always wanted to study Revelation, and I'm just going to tell you, I stay clear of that book a lot because it's just so hard to understand. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I believe you're studying it. And maybe a Bible study that we go to can study it. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, and I was the same way because I actually came in in the middle of that mm -hmm. study, right in the middle. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I just don't know if I can do this. And I had done Bible study for several years. Mm -hmm. But if you just break it down, you take it step by step and question by question and chapter by chapter, it will become more clear. Yes. Well, you know what? Our time is almost out. I've really enjoyed you, Thank Sheila. You. You've been Thank so you. good. I'm going to have you back. Will you come back? I will. We'd love to have you. So why don't you just look into the camera and just take, you know, a minute right here to this one and take a minute and just tell Frankfurt something about your heart, about what you want them to know about studying the Bible. Well, uh, it is one of the most glorious adventures that you will ever go on. And it is just a way for God to meet with you personally. And he so longs to meet with us. He created us for that relationship with him and with each other. And the Bible is pure truth. God never tricks us. He doesn't tease us. He is absolute truthfulness. And he, he wants us to walk in truth because the Bible says, you shall know the truth and the, and the truth, truth will set you free. Well, amen. We thank you again. Thank well, you. this is Table Talk and God bless.
I'm Dan Luttrell, pastor at the Antioch Church. And this Monday, August the 1st, we're going to be at Camp Pleasant Baptist Church, 830 Shadrick Ferry Road, out by Oynton Way. Start at 7 and we'll end a little bit after 8 o'clock. Come out and we're inviting all of Frankfort to be with us to pray and see the power of God move. If you have any questions, call me at 229-2724. the answer for every problem, every question, every prayer. For a minimum donation of $3, which covers the cost of production, shipping, and handling, you can have one of our new bracelets. Get yours today.